Okay, I'm ready. So a lot of people on social media have been asking questions about what happened between me and my ex-wife. And for the longest, I've been ignoring messages because this is not something I like to publicize, you know? Like at all. I don't like people even knowing anything about my business. But I want to just clear things up because it's been quite a misconfusion. And I don't like that narrative that's being painted. So, I'm going to go back to the beginning. How everything started between me and my ex-wife. Okay. So, August 2019. Me and Rumla met. We linked up at Lake Centennial in Edina. And I'm the type of guy where I let everything, not everything out, but I let people know my values, my morals, and my principles. Because I stand on that. And I never, ever leave that unsaid. I let people know the first date that I end up going with them, you know? So we went to Lake Centennial. We sat down on the bench. And it's late at night. And we know we're just talking. We're just talking about our lives and stuff like that. Just getting to know each other. I told her exactly what I want in a woman. And what I value as a man, you know? So I told her that I live by three things. Literally three things that I live by. Honesty, respect, and loyalty. Like, no matter if you're my significant other, my family member, or a friend. Those are the things that I live by. And if you the type of person where you don't value those things, then we don't need to be around each other. So I told her about, you know, my ideal woman. What do I like in a woman? I told her that I prefer someone who do not smoke at all. She told me, she was like, oh, okay, well, I smoke nicotine, but I don't smoke weed. And I'm the type of guy where personally, I prefer my girl to not smoke any type of devices, weed or anything, you know. But when she was straightforward with me, because a lot of females lie about that. The fact that she was straightforward with me about the nicotine. You know, the jewel pause at the time. I was like, okay, I, I can't really hate on that. She was straightforward because sometimes I just find things out with people throughout time. So I was like, okay. Then I told her that um that I don't like liars. Like, I hate liars with a passion. I don't care if you, the closest person to me in my life, if you lie to me, I'm going to cut you off completely. Completely. Without any second chances or anything like that because I just believe in humans supposed to be honest. You're supposed to be honest with things that you do in life. There's no room for you to lie. Like, I'm not your parent. Like, I'm not going to ground you. you I'm not going to be disappointed by you or anything like that. Just be honest with me. Like, it, there's no consequences of you, you know, lying to me. You don't have to. If you're going to lie, go the opposite way. But I told her that I don't like lies. It's probably, like, one of the number one things I don't like in a person. She like, okay. Then I told her, from my previous relationship... I don't do the friends thing, you know? I told her from the start, if me and you continue after today and we start to slowly build our bond that I don't want none of your friends in my business at all. None of your friends. I don't do that type of stuff. Like, in my previous relationship before Rumla, the reason why, and not even the only reason why, but the main reason why things didn't work out well was because friends and family was in that girl's ear. And I learned from that, you know, I I just don't like people in my business. And like I'm telling you, I'm the type of guy where it's up to you to stay or to go. That's my principles. You can tell me yours, you know. So Rumla answered all my questions. She said that she don't smoke weed. She does jewels. She told me she, that she don't talk to her friends about anything that goes on in her relationship. Because I look at that as gossiping, you know what I mean? But. She told me that she don't, you know, talk to him about certain things, you know. So I'm like, okay, 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 okay. One out of two so far, you know what I mean? And then she told me that she do not lie. So I'm the type of guy where I give you the benefit of the doubt in the beginning. Like, I, I put my trust in everybody until you break it, you know. That's the type of guy that I am. So, you know, that go by. Then after that, things progressed. 
you know, we were talking for like six, seven months. Then we ended up, you know, I eventually tied the knot. And after the talking stage and everything, right, um, one of the, the first things that um, that went left with us was that she wanted, because she likes to travel, right? So she went on this trip to um, to California with uh, three of her best friends at the time. And, you know, she uh, she called me when she got to California. She was like, hey, what's good? I'm like, girl, what you doing on the phone right now? Like, go enjoy your trip. Like, we, you know, we can talk when you come back to Minnesota. She's like, oh, no, I want to hear your voice every day. I want to hear your voice, like, you know, at least before I go to bed. And I'm like, oh, if, that, if, if, if that's what you want. Because me, when I'm on a trip, I ain't, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying my trip. I don't want to talk to nobody, you feel me? So I was like, okay, you, you can do that if you want. So she was there for like, what, four or five days. And she would call me every night, letting me know what she did that day what happened, like how adventurous things was and everything, you know, and I'm just listening to everything, right? And then I think it was like on the, the second to last day or the last day there, no, the second to last day there, she posted this one picture where she was at this one park and it was at night, it was like 1 a.m. like uh, in Cali time. So it was like three something, I believe, so in Minnesota. And I remember when I seen that, when she posted it on Snapchat, I'm like, why? Like, why is she at a park at night? You know what I mean? Like, that, it just stood in, like, it just stuck to me. You know what I mean? So, you know, she called me the next day and everything. She let me know how everything went in her day and all that. She said, I'm about to go, you know, catch the flight. You know what I mean? So I waited till she came back to Minnesota. And she came over to my career when she came back and everything, right? And, uh, you know, I'm seeing if she's going to, like, tell me, like, like, why she was at that park at that time. Cause I didn't know what the fuck was going on. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what was going on. So she didn't tell me. So like, I think I, it was about like a few weeks or maybe close to a month. Time went by like, and that, that thing just kept like replaying in my head. Like I'm a, I'm a overthinker. Like I overthink things and I'm just like, what is, what is she doing there? So I was like, man, I had to ask her. I was like, yo, like what were you doing at that park at that time? You know what I mean? And I re- recalled the date and everything. And then she was just like, she was like, uh, she said she was just there with some friends and stuff like that, right? So I'm just like, okay. Then I think a couple of days went by again. This, it was still on my mind. I'm like, what is going on? Like, what is going on? Like, I Because I, I, I didn't believe that initially at all. So I eventually got the truth out of her. And what she told me was that I was smoking at that park. Because I did my research before she even confessed to that, right? I did my research on on Google. And I looked up that park because she had the caption of the park on the, the Snapchat filter. So I looked up the park and I realized from like the comments and everything that people go there to smoke at night. It was in San Diego, California. So then that's when I confronted her about it again. And that's when she finally confessed and said, yeah, I, I was smoking there. And when I tell you, I, I hate liars. Like, even if it's a small lie, I don't mess with liars, right? So when she when she told me that, she ended up showing me a video on Snapchat of her smoking the blunt and everything. And then I asked her, why did you do that? She was like, I don't know. I just wasn't thinking, but it wasn't intentional. I'm like, intentional? It wasn't intentional? How was it not intentional? You literally had a blunt in your mouth, smoking a blunt, recording yourself doing that. But you didn't send it to me. So what you mean that's not intentional? You a smart woman. You know the definition of intentions. Because I don't know who you sent that video to. It was was saved in your drafts, but you didn't tell me about it. Or you didn't show me uh, the thing. And you called me every night while you was in Cali. So what's what's the real reason why you did that? You know what I mean? Because I like to get to know, I like to, to pick out people's brains to figure out why they do certain things that they do to betray somebody, you know? Like, so she had no explanation. She just said, I don't know why I did it. I'm like, okay. So I was, I was sad, bro. I was in my feelings, like, badly, you know, um, because I was fighting my, my emotions. Like, one side of me was like, I love this girl, so I wanted to be in my life. But then the other side was like, I don't rock with liars, bro. Like, I real life do not rock with them. So I'm like, should I just break things off? So I had to, I needed some time to myself for a little bit. I think it was probably for like a week or something like that, maybe a little bit under. Like, because I get over things pretty quick, but that was eating me alive. And I think it was like a week and a half or two after everything, 
I, I, you know, I talk to Rumbler and I was just like, you know, if I'm being honest with you, I will use, I would usually just leave you, leave you if you've done something like this, but I'm not going to lie. I love you, girl. Like I can see something in you, you know, cause I did see something in her at the time, you know, and now, you know, that was a red flag that I should never overlook, but I gave her a chance, but I told her that I'm not going to be able to say like, like those, those sweet words and words of affirmation and saying, I love you. Cause I struggle with saying, I love you to people like that's not my specialty. I didn't grow up hearing that as a kid at all from my mother. I didn't hear that. So when I tell someone I love them, I really mean that to the fullest, bro. Like, I mean that. And she known that. She knew about my life story. She knew everything that I've been through. She know everything that I've been through, all the trauma. So when I, when I say certain things, if definitely I love you to somebody, I mean that. I don't joke around about those things. And... I'm the one that would say it first all the time. Like, you know, I was the one that initiated saying that in the first place. So I told her that I'm not going to be able to say that, you know, I'm hurt and I really love you and I still do love you, but you know how hard it is for me to say those words and everything that came with words of affirmation, you know, reassurance. Cause I was given all that in the beginning. And at the time when, you know, when things was going rocky, you know, well before actually not when, but before, I was giving her everything. You know what I mean? Literally everything. So she was like, okay, well, I'm going to make it up for you. I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to gain your trust again, you know? And not even trust, but just because I didn't have trust, is, trust issues with that girl at that time. But she was like, I'm going to make it up to you, you know? Um, so, you know, even throughout the time, because I, I was mad still, you know, I still felt the type of way. I was sad and everything, but I still was letting her be around me. Like she would be over at my house every day. She would sleep over at my house every day. You know what I mean? And that's just how much I love that girl because I didn't want to be around her, but I'm like, you know, you're still my girl at the end of the day. I ain't going to, you know, because I knew what she was going through in her personal life too. So I wouldn't let someone be stranded like that, you know? So I kept it in. But um, after that, her birthday, uh, she wanted um this jersey, this uh, Miami Heat jersey. Cause she wanted to customize like some uh, some Air Forces to uh, to match that, so I went to California with with a, uh, with a few homies, and there was this one day I was like, "Yo, I'm about to take the rental to myself real quick. Like, give me an hour or two. I'm about to go do something." So I already bought two jerseys, you know, for for Rumble at the time, like two Miami Heat jerseys. But one of them was obviously fake. The other one was a real one, but it was small, you know, <laughs> it was a small one, but she could still fit it. But um. I was like, man, I'm about to get a, another one that's that's nice. So I went, grabbed a the whip, then um I was just looking around California. Bro, that boy, California, big as hell. I'm talking big. Like, I'm looking all around. I was in Inglewood. I'm in Santa Monica. I'm like all around that thing, just looking for jerseys. I'm asking people, like, where could I find a Miami Heat jersey at? You know what I mean? And um, I ended up finding one, right? And then when I came back to Minnesota, you know, because I already gave her a birthday gifts already, but this was going to be, like, additional because I wanted to get, like, the perfect one for her, right? So I gave it to her. She was like, oh, my God, I love it, you know? It made me feel good. It made me feel really good inside because I'm going to give her. So one of her friends, I'm not going to say their names, none of her friend names, but one of her friends, um, I had, she had me on her private story on Snapchat, right? And, you know, I would see her stories and everything. I would see, you know, what she's doing and stuff like that, you know? And um, it came to a time where I stopped seeing her post often. And I'm just like, like, like I said, I'm an overthinker. So I think about things, but I'm not going to necessarily bring it up to you right away. You know, so I thought that in my head, I'm like, did she take me off? But I didn't want to talk to Rumble about it because I didn't think I, I didn't know if I was over exaggerating or not. So there was just one day she was over in my crib. Rumble showed me her phone. She showed me one story. Ooh, I just said the name. I have to blur that out. But she showed me one of her fr that, that friend's story. Right. And. It was a private story. So when I looked at that, I was like, oh, let me look at my phone real quick. <laughs> so I looked at my phone. I checked the name. The story wasn't there. So I'm like, oh, I see what's going on. And it's kind of ironic, too, because before this, I've been telling Rumble that I feel like her friends did not like me. I've been telling her that. I was like, I don't think your friends rock with me. And she'll be like, no, they love you. What you talking about? Like, they think you're a good person, all that. But I just had a feeling in my heart that things wasn't right with friends. Like, Cause I can I can pick up you know energy pretty well, and I didn't get that that uh, good energy from them. 
you know, so I was like, okay. But when I seen that, I, I it kind of confirmed everything. It confirmed my suspicion, you know, and um, on Instagram, because um, I didn't say nothing to Rumble about that when I noticed that she didn't have me on her private store anymore. But Instagram um, happened. Someone posted that girl on their story. And that story she had on the jersey that I bought for Rumla. And mind you, this is the same girl that took me off her story. So I'm like, why would you take me off her story, but yet you wearing the jersey that I bought for my girl, which is your best friend? And why did Rumla let this girl wear the jersey that I bought her? Like, this is not no Target, white tees, Walmart, white tees or anything like that. This is a real live jersey. That mud, you know what I mean? Like, it's, that ain't something little, you feel me? And it was something that you wanted for your birthday. So I got it for you. And you know what's crazy about it too is that Rumla didn't wear the jersey. Like her friend wore it before she even put it on. So that hurt in my I ain't gonna lie, that hurt in my feelings, bro, because I don't know if it's just I project off how, you know, I am with certain things, or sometimes I feel like I just be overthinking things, you know? But literally, I remember when I was sick one time. Rumla ended up buying me some ginger ale. It was a ginger ale pack. It was like 12 cans of them, right? And my friends came over one day. I was sick too at the time. So she bought that and made me feel better. My friends came over at the time, right? And they were like, can I get can, let, can I get a ginger ale? I'm like, boy, nah, what? Yeah, that's my girl gift to me. Even if it was something little, you know, that ginger ale pack probably like, you know, $4, $5 type stuff, right? But when it's a gift from someone, I really cherish those. I don't let nobody touch my gifts. So certain times I feel like I do be like projecting certain things, like as far as like how I will handle things. So I makes me feel entitled a little bit, but I confronted Rumble about that. So when I told her, I was like, why the, like, you know, I'm like, why the hell you let your friend wear my jersey that I got for you? Like, that's the jersey I got for you. That's yours, not hers, bro. I got it for you and you didn't even wear it yet. I went off. I ain't gonna lie. I went off, bro. I was fed up. I was mad, bro. And she was like, I was like, why'd you do it? I asked her again, why'd you do it? What made you do that? She said, I don't know why. I just wasn't thinking. I'm like, how come every time you get caught up with something, the main thing or the only thing you say is that I don't know why I did it. It just happened. Why is that always your excuse to everything? Because that, that make it seem like it's BS. Like, you got to have some type of ex explanation for something where you just let your friends run, run over you. That's not cool, bro. Like, you're in a relationship. You're not single. Like, if you're single, you can do what the fuck you want. You can do anything that you want in this life. But if you in a relationship, you can't do stuff like you can't be moving like that because you have another person that you're in a relationship with that has feelings. Like, yeah, I'm a man. I don't be expressing myself like that. Yeah, I don't be expressing myself like that. Like, you know, I don't, I'm not an emotional dude, but I'm still a human being at the end of the time. Like, at the end of the day, I'm a human being. So, you know, we I, I went off on her about it. She, you know, she apologizing to me and everything. And man, I'm so mad. Like, I'm super mad. So I'm just like, man, I can't deal with this right now. So I ended up going, you know, home and stuff like that. And then I ended up posting on Instagram. I, I made like a, um, um, a a question thingy on Instagram. I asked people, I was like, what would you do if your girlfriend or boyfriend, best friend disrespects you? You know what I mean? And then, um, 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 what is it called? Um, I posted that. And then like somehow that friend don't got me on Instagram. She had me on snap, but she ended up seeing my thing. So I don't know who sent it to her. You know what I mean? Cause I don't know how she would have known it was about her because it was a it was a secluded situation that happened. So I don't know how it went about. I don't know how she even seen it. She didn't have me on Instagram. So she ended up swiping up on my story and said, boy, you, she said, I, I don't want to misquote her, but she said like something amongst the lines like, oh, you, you, um, you weird as hell or some shit like that. Something like that. She said something like that, right? And usually I ain't gonna lie. If someone come at me reckless like that, I'll usually go off on them. But I just told her like, here, here's my number. Gave her my number. Call me. She ended up calling me. I kid you not. We start talking, no arguing, nothing like that. I'm just asking her questions about everything that happened and everything, right? We ended up squashing everything. Like, we, we started to, like, you know, to understand each other. And um, she told me that she just, from, like, because she told me that Rumla was telling her stuff about our relationship, which I told Rumla, I don't do that. She Rumla was telling her about the relationship, and she was exaggerating things to make it seem like she was going through hell, literally going through hell. So the girl, her friend told me, she was like, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought this was a, 
I don't want to say the guy's name, but Rumla's ex, she said part two though. Because I guess Rumla, you know, has her story about her previous, him doing some stuff to her or whatever, you know, some messed up things and stuff like that, right? So she said, I feel like this was much worse than that. And I'm like, what? I didn't even put this girl through nothing. I didn't do not near, not even close to none of the things that this guy done to her. None of that. I was like, man, I treat this girl like a queen. Boy, I do so much for that girl. You you name it, bro. Gifts, words of affirmation, reassurance, everything that she wanted. Because that's, that's her love language. I was doing everything because that's just who I genuinely is. I'm a good guy. So I'm like, why is this girl making it seem like she's going through something she's really not, though? You know what I mean? Like, it don't make no sense. So we talked everything through, and I'm like, man, I'm a, I'm a straight person. I'm a straightforward person. So I'm like, man, I have nothing to hide at the end of the day. Nothing to hide at the end of the day. I was like, man, we're going to put Rumla on the, on the line right now. We ended up calling Rumla on a three-way. Rumla was like, oh, I thought I thought you meant it in this way. I thought you meant it in that way. I confronted her about everything. Literally everything. She had nothing to say about it. She apologized to me. But I'm like, why are you making it seem like you're going through stuff when you're really not? And if you was going through all that stuff, why the hell are you still with me then? Make it make sense. So when that happened... You know what I mean? Like I said, me and that girl, we squashed everything. So we, she told me everything. She told me some other things too that about Rumla where I should have low key took into consideration. She told me about like you know, uh, she had a because I asked her about like Rumla lying. I was like, does she like does she do this a lot? And she told me she has a past, like you know, of lying. Like in the past, she had a problem with that back then. And when she told me that, I low key should have took things into consideration. Where I was just like, I'm done with it. I can't deal with this because I don't deal with liars, bro. I don't. So I still gave her another chance because I love the girl, like I said. And like when I say I love someone, I really mean that sincerely. So took her back. She uh, came to me and she was like, uh, this was months after this, right? Um, not too long after this, but months after this. She was like, I plan on going on a trip with um, one of my friends, uh, and she was like this, and this friend is like a girl that's single, and she, she, she's a single. Just know she's single when she moves single, right? And she and uh, Rumla told me that that girl wanted her to uh, to go on trips with her, like just those two. And I'm, I ain't gonna lie to you, like I felt some type of way as far as like I was weirded out by it, cause I'm like, why does a single girl want to go on a trip with a girl that's in a relationship? You know what I mean? Like it didn't make sense to me. But who am I to tell someone you can't do something you want to do? Cause Rumla like to travel. So I'm like, okay, you can do that if you want. I don't just be careful and make the right choice and think about the relationship at all times. So she go on a trip to the, um uh Atlanta. It was Atlanta. She went on a trip to Atlanta and she ended up going to this um because we made we made me and Rumble have made agreements. Like we told each other we both like cause I made it I established that, you know. I don't pardon. I don't do none of those type of things. Like, that's not in my character. I just don't do that. She was like, she don't do that either. She said the most she's done was, you know, just like at the time, like, you know, 2019, 18 era, you know, like the Airbnbs and stuff like that. But she said she don't party at all, just like me or club. So when she went on a trip, she posted something on her story. Uh, it was like, she was like in this booth area. And I was wondering, I'm like, huh? Like, that's I'm like, that's like a club to me. I asked her about it when she called me. I was like, you was at a, I was like, where were you? She said, I was at a, I was at a, um, I was at a concert, a Rick Ross concert. I'm like, okay. That's what she told me. Literally, that's what she told me. So, like I said, I'm an overthinker. So, I'm overthinking things again. I'm like, man, that don't seem right. So, some weeks go by when she came back to Minnesota. I ended up confronting her about that, that thing. And I'm like, what was that? Rick? Be honest with me. I think this one took like, I think it took her like a month to actually admit that, or a little bit, probably over a month. It took a long time for her to actually admit that it was a club that she went to. She lied to me and said that it was a concert. And like I said, we both agreed that if we do go to any party or club, that it's going to be with each other. It's not going to be separate or nothing like that because we both don't party. So that's lie number two that she did. Lie number two. First was with the weed, with the Cali trip. Now, this trip, when it comes to... um. You know, partying and clubbing and shit like that. She lied about that. And I'm like, why you even want to party or club anyway? You in a relationship, girl. Like, what? That don't make no sense. So I'm not going to lie to you. And then plus the, the situation with her friend, like, you know, wearing that jersey that I bought for her before she even wore it. So, like I said, man, it, if it messed up my mind again. Like, I'm in a dark place right now. And, like, definitely at that time, I don't talk to people about my problems. So even my closest friends, I didn't talk to them about none of that. 
because I don't do that. When people ask me, how's you on Rumble? I'm like, man, we all good, man. I'm telling you, like, you know what I mean? Like, even when I'm going through it, I'm telling motherfuckers, like, we're good. You know what I mean? I'm just like, man, like, that happened. I'm like, man, that's crazy. Then she went on another trip to Vegas with that same girl. That same girl. But I don't know if I'm getting a trip mix. I don't know if Vegas came first or Atlanta. But it was one. Either, either way, I'm telling you the full story. I'm telling you the, the real story, but I forgot which one came first. But then she go to a trip with Vegas to that with that same girl. And I remember she told me. This time she actually called me and told me about everything. Like, literally, she told me about everything. Like, even there's one thing that she that she did out there. To me, it was weird because I'm just like, why would you even? You know what I mean? Like, so that girl that she was with, apparently that girl, she she loved Chicago, Chicago dudes and Atlanta dudes and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So she liked specific type of people, you know? So that girl ended up, you know, um, you know, some guys tried hitting on her at uh, at some place in Vegas. I don't know if they was on a strip or what, but some guys tried hitting on her, right? And that guy that she, that she was with or whatever had a friend with him, you know? And I guess they was renting out some type of car or something like that. Like, you know, one of those expensive, I don't know if it was a Lambo, Corvette or something, but it was some expensive whip. And she said that the dudes invited him into the whip and she ended up going inside the whip and stuff like that. And I'm just, she told me, but she, I ain't gonna lie. She was honest about it, but I'm just like, why would you do that though? You know what I mean? So she ended up going to the whip. She said the friend tried flirting with her and he was like asking his like a lot of like, you know, just like, you know, questions and stuff like that. She's like, I, I got a boyfriend, like, no, thank you type stuff. But to me, that's still kind of a, it's kind of a contradiction, though. it's kind of weird because it's like, yeah, you, you have a boyfriend, you quote unquote telling the guy that you have a boyfriend yet. You still in that car with him and his friend and your friend. What do you expect to go? Like, be common sense. I'm a man. I'm a grown man, too. So I know what, what other, you know, dudes be on in these type of scenarios. I know what they be on. You know what I mean? And they can put her in a very dangerous situation where I can't help her because she across the motherfucking, you know what I mean? Like, she across the states. Like, she's in Vegas. I'm in Minnesota. You know what I mean? So I'm like, man, she told me the truth so I can only respect the the honest truth about it but then again like i think she lied a lot of times i don't even know if she even told the full truth that i don't know but i always give people the benefit of the doubt you know so i ain't gonna lie to you if those things went by and stuff like that we went we, I, i'm still healing at this time so i'm still not giving a reassurance and stuff like that like i'm giving it to her but it's like every other like week or day or something like that it's not constant and she would just tell me she loved me first because i'm the one that usually say i love you she started saying it first, and I would say it back to her, but she started finding a problem with that, and she's like, oh, when are you going to start saying that? I'm like, I don't know when, you know? Like, I don't know when I'm going to start saying it. Like, it's, it got to come natural to me because I'm still hurt at this time. Like, this month went by, months went by, but I'm like, I'm still hurt. So I, I and it's something that, that, that was caused by something that you did that hurt me, but it's still my fault. So I, I should have low-key left. It's still my fault. You know what I mean? So I can't blame that girl for that. It's still my fault. I should have left, but it hurt me deeply. You know what I mean? It hurted me deeply. And she's trying to rush me. And I'm just like, you can't rush someone that's healing. You can't rush me. And she'll be like, oh, I just wish you can be back to the old Marcus. I wish you can go back to him. Like, I miss him. I'm like, the old Marcus that you had, you didn't cherish him. You didn't value that Marcus. Because if you did, you would have never crossed him or betrayed him in the beginning. So I've always, me and, me and Roman always had a problem with that. Because things derived from those incidents that happened that caused a lot of friction in our relationship. You know what I mean? Like a lot of friction. Everything that I told her on that first date, literally the first date at Centennial, I told her, I don't do friends in my business. I don't do liars. I don't want a girl that smoke weed or anything like that. What did she do? She crossed all those things. And, and when I asked her, why did you do the things you did? She always said it wasn't intentional. You knew how I felt about those things. So how can you say it's not intentional? Imagine if I'd done the same thing to you, you would be telling me, oh, you a fucked up type of, I don't want to say that word, but you a fucked up dude. You bogus, you this, you that. But when you do it, you get a pass because what? Why? So, you know, time go by and stuff like that. You know, um, bef this is when things get really rocky. This is what I feel like was the ending to our relationship. Because even during that time where she lied to me multiple times and done some messed up things, we still were trying to progress and we wasn't doing bad. You know what I mean? Like we were, we, we, we gotten a lot better with each other, you know? And, this was um, 2021, November, when I proposed. Wait, well, before I proposed her. So two months before November 2021. Two months before I proposed to Rumla, um, I 
spoke to her friends about it. Three of her best friends that she that she um that she was close with at the time. I'm like, I plan on marrying your friend, you know? And uh I bought the ring already, so I showed them the ring. Um they they made a group chat um with all of us. We talked on the on on um on FaceTime about it. It was a group FaceTime. We were talking about you know, my ideas with the the proposal and everything. I showed him literally everything. I showed him the video, how I want it to be done. I talked to him about the ideas. I told him literally everything. This is two months before. So I told him, like, you know, I'm going to be reaching out back to you guys, like, you know, like every every day or every other day because, you know, it was like a time crunch to me, even though it was two months before, but it was still like a time crunch for me because I needed things to be done right then and there. So I would message these girls. i will be showing them things, and then they wasn't responding back, especially the one that was supposed to be her maid of honor. Like her best, closest friend. I was messaging her the most because that was her best friend, literally. And I'm letting her know, you know, like, you know, showing her things and all that stuff, telling her things. And I would, I called all three of them twice each, twice each. None of them answered, but one of them called back. One of them called back twice. But the other ones wasn't responding back to my thing, like my text messages on the time that I like wanted. Because it's like. You know what I want, you know what I mean? And everybody has their phone in their hands, so I feel like there's no excuses to respond back like a day later or hours later. Like, I'm talking about hours, hours later. It's not like, you know what I mean? I'm talking about like hours, like 12 hours type stuff. So I was just like, you know, I found a mutual friend that was friends with me, Rumla, and her, her, her inner friends, you know? So I was like, yo, can you prolong a message for me? I'm going to be, you know, giving you information on what I want to do with this proposal stuff, like more often, like, you know, and you, you send it to them or you talk to them about it. So she ended up reaching out to them and she was like, oh, they responded back, like, quick. And I'm like, huh? I was like, I was doing that, but I was like, okay, well, that's cool. I didn't really have time to be petty about it. So I was like, okay, that's cool. You just give them the information about things, you know? And I'm, you know, figuring out things on my own. So as I did that, two months before the proposal, my personal friends, like my friends that are best friends to me, the people I invited from my side, because I had them deal with Rumla's side. I told them, you invite, you know, all of Rumla's friends, because I don't know all our friends, so I told them to handle that. I handled mine literally the week of Cause I was that busy and I was stressed. Like I was stressing like big time. Cause I had to get everything set. The cameraman, the venue, I got everything set, decorations, everything. So I'm just like, man, like <laughs> I invited my, my closest friends literally the week of, bro. Like literally the week of the proposal. And what did my friends do? The day of, they popped up, they showed up. No questions asked. They helped the decorations immediately. You know, immediately. They were, they didn't feel salty about it or nothing like that, you know? And, and if they did feel salty about it, they could have felt it. Like, you know, they they were entitled to because I literally invited them to wake up. That's how stressed I was and busy I was. You know what I'm talking about? So when that happened, um, after the proposal, the proposal went good. Like the, the proposal was a success. It was good. But um, two days after the proposal, it was like a day or two after, Rumla's friend that was going to her best friend that was going to be her maid of honor you know, called her to link up. She was like, I want to link up with you and talk to you and stuff like that, right? So Romla linked up with the girl, right? The girl ended up saying, I'm not as happy as I wanted to be for you on your day. And these are the words that Romla told me that the girl said. She was like, I wasn't as happy as I wanted to be for you on your day. And Romla told me that. My reaction was quite crazy. I'm like, huh? I'm like, that ain't no friend. I was like, what type of friend say that to their best friend that literally just got proposed to? That's a stepping stone for their life. How you going to tell them that, you know, oh, I'm not as happy as I wanted to be for you? Huh? Bro, my best friend right now, if he got married, bro, or let's say he proposed to his girl, even if I felt some type of way, which I feel like no one should feel any type of way because that's not your business. I wouldn't tell him that, though. Even if I did feel that way, I wouldn't tell that man. Oh, I felt this type of way about it. What? That's some hating stuff, bro. Like, I don't care what nobody say. That's hating stuff right there, bro. You can't tell me that it's okay for a friend to tell they, their friend, I'm not happy for you on your day. What? Make it make sense. So, Roman told me, I said, nah, that's that's not that's not real, bro. That's fake as hell. For real. And Rumla, uh, Rumla was like, okay, I'm going to talk to her and stuff like that. And I guess the reason why the girl felt some type of way is because she was like, oh, the... I feel like Marius could have been in better communication with us and all this. I'm like, girl, I told you guys two months in advance. I was in constant communication with you guys. And then once I found out that you guys wasn't answering my calls, y'all wasn't texting back as soon as possible, I just got someone else to send y'all the message for me. So y'all, it's not like y'all were left out of information. 
I let y'all, and in and, and all honesty, I didn't have to even invite y'all to the thingy. If I'm being honest, I didn't have to. I didn't have to invite y'all. I didn't have to tell y'all about it, literally. So you should be happy that I even reached out to y'all because it has nothing to do with y'all, you feel me? Only reason why I did it was because Rumla said, like, when we talked about proposing, like, way before I did it, she said, oh, if you do that, just make sure my friend's around. So I kept that in the back of my mind. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, man, that's that's weird, bro. Like, that's that's actually weird. So I ain't gonna lie, that stuff, man, like, I'm trying to I'm trying to get over this stuff. I'm trying to forget about it and everything, but I couldn't forget about it. I told Rumla, I'm like, man, I'm not gonna lie to you. I dealt with disrespect from your friends a little too much, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I told you about friends. I don't deal with friends. And this is where I'm messed up. I should have never said this. I should never, you know, done this. But I literally gave up Rumla Ultimate. I was like, is he the me or them at this point, bro? Literally. I, I was so fed up, bro. I'm beyond fed up. Cause I'm like, what the fuck did I do to these people? I've never crossed these people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a type of person where if I'm not going to step on your shoes if you don't step on mine. I'm not that type of dude. I respect everybody that I come across. I don't put my nose in people's business. I don't care about what you're going on. I'm going to respect you, though, as a human being, because that's what I'm supposed to do. As a Muslim, as a human being, you're supposed to respect people. So I never res- disrespected her friends at all. And the fact that they felt the type of way about me, I'm like, bro, what is the real reason why? Because I'm not going to lie to you. I received a lot of hate just from that community, you know, from, from Roman's community. So I'm just like, is it has to do with me being African-American or what? But she like, oh, it has nothing to do with that. So I'm like, then what the real reason is? I've never disrespected your friends. Why the hell they keep disrespecting me like that? You know what I mean? So... Rumla talked to her friends and stuff like that. It's like they couldn't find, like, a balance. You feel me? So that's when I gave the ultimatum. I should never done it. I'm bogus as hell for it. I'm very wrong for that. I should never done that. As a man, I should never done that. It's not cool to get someone ultimatum. And the fact that, you know, I made Rumla cry about that. Like, she started crying. And I, I, when I realized that it was so hard on her, I felt bad because I didn't realize what I was doing. I was acting out of emotion, which I barely do. I don't act out of emotion. So I apologized. And I was like, you know what? I'm Regardless if you're friends with them or not, continue being friends with them. I'll support any decision that you make. And I apologize sincerely about that because it was wrong. So I ended up talking to um, her friend, uh, the the one she was going to make the maid of honor. We ended up talking. I told her how I felt. I, uh, but before I talked to her, I, I spoke to um, her other friend about that girl. I was like, you know, first I asked for some advice about with Roma and stuff like that, which I should never done. Then I, I, I asked her friend about, I was like, I was like, so what's up with so-and-so? You know, what's up with Shorty? Like, why she say that to Roma? Like, to me, that's some hating stuff. I told her straight up, I was like, I feel like that's some hating stuff. And those girls are friends. So it's not like I didn't expect it to go back to that girl, you know, but I should never even went to, you know, that friend to begin with. But I told her that, you know, that's some hating stuff. Like, I don't see why she would do that. Like, you know what I mean? Then that girl ended up telling the, the Rumble's best friend. Rumble's best friend uh, ended up talking to Rumble about it, and she was just, like, um, like heated and everything. And then we ended up talking. Uh, we, me and that girl, her best friend, ended up talking. Things didn't go well in the conversation. I told her exactly how I felt. She told me how she felt, which I feel like she, like, this. it's common sense. You shouldn't feel no type of way about me because I didn't do nothing to you at all. Like, if you mad at me about the proposal thing, I literally got you guys involved with the whole thing before I even got my friends involved with it. You feel me? I talked to y'all about it two months in advance. I gave y'all every detail about it, which I didn't give my best friends that. So how can y'all feel the type of way about me? You feel me? And the fact that you would tell my, my fiance at the time that you don't, come on, man, like, I have every right to be mad at you because you said some shit like that about me. Because that was something that I did for your best friend. And you going to say some stuff like that? Come on, man. So that conversation didn't go well. Um, Rum was sad about the whole thing still because, you know, she was stuck between, like, her, her best friend and her fiancé. And um, the, the 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 friend ended up uh, texting Rum saying, like, oh, can, um, she called her. She was like, uh, can, we, um, can we link up um, tomorrow or something like that? So we can talk or some, you know, and Rumble was happy after that because she was sad at first, but she ended up being happy right after that. Right. And then I'm just like, OK. And then she ended up, you know, I think she got like a text from that girl because that girl canceled the plans with her. But she got like a text or a call or something like that from her. And she was just like, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to end this friendship with you because I felt very hurt by what your husband, not husband, but fiance said at the time and words really does hurt. You know, and she cut out the friendship and she blamed me for it, her friend. She was like, pretty much because of me. Then, Rumla told me about everything that, that that was said in that conversation. But I remember the last thing that she told me, it was something that was so, like, it was very petty. And, like, it was like, 
from what the friend said, it was like wishing bad upon our future relationship. You know what I mean? And I remember uh, when she told me, I'm like, huh? That's weird, bro. Like, that's weird. But I was just still weirded out by why did you want to end that friendship, though? Like, what do you, like, what was so big to make you want to end a friendship with someone you consider your best friend that was going to make you maid of honor? And you ended that friendship over, okay. Rumble was depressed after that. And Rumble blamed me and she blamed them too, but she would always say that, oh, you, you, you part of the reason why that happened. And I'm like, how am I, to, like, you know what I mean? I'm a reactive type of dude, bro. Like, I don't cross people. I'm a very loyal guy just in general with this relationship, friendship, anything. I'm very loyal. So I'm like, me reacting? I'm wrong for that? So you expect me to take the, the high road and, you know, apologize to people or like, you know, just be the bigger man. When I didn't do nothing first, like your friends should apologize to me because they said something about my relationship that has nothing to do with them. And then she, that's something that Rumla held against me for a while. She, she started to like, just blame me for that. Say you not the full reason, but you part of the reason. But I'm like, I just reacted. Like if I would have done something to them first then I would completely understand, but I didn't, you know what I mean? So that's when things went rocky in our relationship. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like. Our relationship went downhill after that, completely downhill. It's crazy. Like, I started to see a different side of Rumble after that. Like, I started to see an attitude. I started to see her yelling. Her start bamming on car. Um, 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 um. I'm, well, I'm blanking out. Right? What the hell? Like, uh, the dashboard of the car and stuff like that. Like, I've never seen her. I've never seen her like act out of like you know like a tantrum like that. And then when I seen those things, it did put in my head like. I've never seen this. Like, who, who is this person that I'm seeing? I start to constantly see like a nasty attitude that was uncontrollable, that I couldn't do nothing about it. No matter what I say or whatever, I try to calm down, calm shorty down. I'm like, she didn't want to. So, but it's still my fault because I still proceeded, you know, with the marriage. And at the end of the day, I still blame myself completely because as a man, I'm the one that leads the relationship. So we still proceeded on, you know, we're getting married and everything. And then like with circumstances and stuff like that, um, my car ended up breaking down, like, literally, like, I would say, a, f a couple days, a couple days before the marriage. Literally, a couple days before the marriage. I'm Carlos at the moment. My homie let me borrow his whip. And, um, um, I'll just fast forward. Before that, we, we, we came up with our, our plan, like, you know what I mean? And my situation was just, like, you know, I... I'm still completely wrong because I should never rush this. Like we talked about like how we're going to have like the bills and everything. And at that moment I couldn't do, I ain't gonna lie. I couldn't do like, you know, just paying for everything myself, like the rent at least I couldn't pay for everything amongst those like myself. Cause the predicament I was in, which is still my fault. Like I said, I should never got married, but I ended up, um, we, we tried to come up with some, she, she the one that recommended 50, 50. She was like, Oh, do you want to do 50, 50? She threw that out there. And I'm like, nah, I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna, wouldn't feel like a man doing that. I was like, let's do like 70, 30. She was like, okay. She didn't have a problem with her, nothing like that, right? I'm like, okay. So we ended up um, getting married and everything. Um, when we got married, I ain't going to lie to you. Like that first week was hell. I ended up catching even COVID. But we was arguing like every day. Like, I'm not even like the beginning of our relationship, not our relationship, but marriage was horrible, horrible, bro. Like that, bro, I'm telling you, it was the worst experience ever. Like, ever. Like, we arguing nonstop. We can't come up with a solution. Nothing's working. I'm like, what the hell is going on, bro? Like, why is we constantly fighting when we shouldn't be arguing with each other? You know what I mean? Like, it's not us against each other. You feel me? And I'm wondering where all this stuff deriving from. And, like, I'm just confused about everything. And then I remember um, um, in the marriage, like, every time we would argue, I'm the type of guy where, and she can vouch for this too. Like I said, she's free to have a conversation with me publicly because I don't want to have no no secret conversations with nobody unless it's public because I'm getting tired of like fake narratives going out there. Like I want things to be said, the truth. When we would argue, I'm telling this girl, talk to me like a human being. Please do not yell. Please do not argue. Like talk to me like a human being. I deserve that because she will always yell at me every time we would disagree. And I'm like, I'm old enough and I'm mature enough to be okay with a disagreement. I don't care if you disagree with me. As long as we both respect each other's answer and we respect each other's opinion, that's all that matters. We don't got to agree with each other. We got two completely different backgrounds. 
You feel me? We're not going to agree on everything, but she would get mad at that type of stuff. And she would be like, oh, I feel like you're just not listening. I'm like, I'm listening to you. I understand you, but I don't agree with you. And she would be mad at those things. And I had to tell this girl lady 10 to 15 times, do not yell. Please, let's talk. Let's literally, let's talk. I don't like yelling. I hate violence. I hate just like hostility. She wouldn't listen to me ever. And I'm telling you, we was married for 11 some months. Throughout this whole entire time, I'm trying to get this girl to literally calm the fuck down. Stop yelling all the time. Stop yelling at me. Stop talking to me like I'm a fucking, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a human being. And then after, like, literally the 15th time when I tell you you still don't listen, then that's when I'm going to turn up and I'm going to be like, you know, man, who the fuck is you talking to, girl? Chill out. You know what I mean? And then every time I, when I get rowdy back with her, she'll be like, oh, what type of husband talks to their wife like that? Who does that? You talk to me so crazy. Girl, you was literally just talking to me crazy for how long? And it took me after the 15th time, and I'm being generous. The 15th time of me telling you to calm down, let's talk like adults. And now you're going to say that I'm talking to you crazy. That's bullshit, bro. Like, that's fucked up. You can't. It's like it's like narratives that people play to other people. And I'm like, and I know these things are getting talked about to a friend. But it's like, I'm not talking to you crazy. I'm literally telling you to calm down. Like, I'm being a mature. And I'm not the only adult in this relationship. Like, we three years apart. I'm 20, you know, I'm 26. I turned 26 in the marriage and she turned 23 in the marriage. So we three years apart. You can't sit up here and tell me that you're not mature enough to handle a fucking conversation bro to the point where you get super mad and angry and you forget about what's the end goal of this marriage you let that shit go because of your emotions bro that's not cool at the end of the day i don't care if you're a woman or anything you're not gonna get away with certain things just because you're a woman like learn how to control your emotions you're an adult at the end of the day you feel me so like we'll be talking about all those things and stuff like that she'll just always get mad literally always get mad and i'm telling you, this girl is a firecracker it's hard to stop her like and i start to see multiple things just within this marriage like she'll be bamming on walls she'll be screaming out loud and then it got to a point where like and i'm like why are you screaming literally i'm talking about screaming punching the walls hitting no fucking broom with on a stick like coming at me come on man like literally what are you doing then the neighbors called the cops the first time the neighbors and that's so embarrassing but the neighbors called the cops and then I'm telling you, the cops, you know, talk to us and stuff like that. And she said everything's okay. But I'm like, man, why the fuck they even had to get to this point, man? That's, man. You know what I mean? That's embarrassing, bro. Because I didn't do, like, I'm, bro, I'm telling you, I'm not being abusive to this girl. I'm not doing nothing to this girl. And she's just screaming like someone fucking killing her or some shit. Or someone beating the fuck out of her. Man. So that's the first time the cops got involved. We get into an argument uh, another time. And we literally just argue. I ain't gonna lie, we both were yelling at each other at that time. But like I'm telling you, I always do procedures. I'm telling you, don't yell at me. Calm down. Let's talk as adults. And you still don't listen? Then, yeah, I'm going to start turning up just like how you was turning up on me. We argue and stuff like that. She ended up telling me, get the fuck out of my house. I'm like, girl, okay, yeah, the the the, the, the place was under your name. And that's my biggest mistake, too. Well, that's never happening again. I'm That's never happening again. But the place was under her name because she had better credit than me. But I'm paying most of the bills in that thing. So I'm like, I'm not going to get out. Nigga, I pay for the bills in this bitch. I pay the rent. What are you talking about? And she was like, get out. And she said, if you don't get out, I'm going to call the cops. I'm like, man, you want to call the cops then. So she called the cops and shit like that. She literally called the cops twice that same day. And my mama, I called my mama. She got mad that I called my mama. I'm like, what? Like, because she kicked me out the crib and I'm grabbing my stuff to leave out. She didn't care where I go or nothing like that. And at this time, I had a car. So, like, I was, you know, I could have slept in my car too. But, you know, I'm like, my mama's in town. So I'm like, I might as well just go to my mama's crib. She got mad that. After she kicked me out of my own crib, she got mad that I hit up my mama to stay with her. And I ain't going to lie, we did say that we don't want our parents or anybody in our business, right? But you already went against that and broke that. So if anything, I'd rather for our parents and our family be part of our business than friends. I don't care what you say. So I ended up calling my mama. Mama was like, okay, come over. So um, um, then that same day or the next day, my mama ended up talking to Roman. And then Roma was crying on the phone. And my mama loved Roma at this time. I'm telling you, she loved Roma. She was like, my mama don't know how to pronounce her name right. She was like, Roma, Roma, please don't be sad, Roma. Like, don't be sad. Everything will be all right, baby. Like, baby, don't don't feel sad. Everything will be all right. You know, but she told Roma, she was like, she was like, Roma, don't ever call the cops on a black man again. I'm going to tell you that. Like, I like you a lot. You're a beautiful woman. But don't call the cops on a black man. That's something that you do not do, no matter what. And Roma agreed. She was like, okay, I'll, you know, I won't ever do that again. She gave my mama her word. Said she'll never do that again. So my mama, even after that thing, she started going off on me, bro. My mama, my mama took Roma's side and started going off on me. And I'm like, that's okay. I'm used to that anyways. Me, me and my mama, like, our relationship be, be rocky at times. But um, 
yeah, that 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 you know, that happened. And Rumla, you know, told me to come back. She called me and told crying, and she told me to come back to the house. And uh, I was over at my mama's crib for like, um, um, actually that that one's for like I think a day or two. I was over at mama. I think it was two days. And she called me, told me to come back. So I came back. Came back. I'm thinking everything get better. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, throughout the whole marriage, we wasn't arguing, like, every day. But it was damn near, like, every other day we literally arguing, though. I'm not even joking. Like, the longest we went without arguing, I think, was about three weeks. And when I came back, I'm thinking things going to get better. You know, thinking she'll never do nothing like that again. Um, time goes by, you know, trying to make things better. Um, just things not working. You know, she's keep telling me, oh, like, I want you to be the same mark as you was back then. I'm like, I'm working still on it. Like, bro, my trauma's deep. I'm telling you. I'm still working on it, but I'm still saying, like, you know, I'm still giving her words of affirmation, not as often as I used to. I'm still saying I love you to you, but not as often as I used to, but it's still a, a, it's still a grind. Like, it was only, like, a year or something that went by. So I'm like, you know, I'm still I'm still healing, but I'm still being nice to you. Like, I wasn't being mean to the girl at all. I'm still nice to you, girl, because that's just who I am. And, you know, um, we ended up, um, um, we got into another argument again before, and then, she, um, when was this, um, when was this, hold on, um, yeah, we got into another argument, like, it was about, like, some, some issue, like, with, um, this, this one girl, she hit me up, and she's a girl that's from, she's, like, my, 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 my old best friend's ex-girlfriend, and she hit me up to get advice from, from me about, you know, her and that dude, so, I gave her advice. I, I get people ask me for advice all the time, so it's not something that's new to me. And Rumla knows that, you know what I mean. And I'm married at this time too, so, and I, I could have sworn I told Rumla about it, but she said she don't remember me telling her about it. So just one time, I was over at my mama's crib, we chilling, we watching like the verses battle and stuff like that. And I end up getting a call from that girl, and I went to the kitchen, started talking to her because it was music playing, it was loud. You know what I mean? Like it's an African American household, it's always music playing. So, I ended up you know talking to her on the phone. Rumla came into the kitchen. She's like, "Who you on the phone with?" I'm like, I said the girl's name, and the girl can hear me too because I didn't mute myself or nothing. And she was like, why is she calling you? I ended up muting myself. And she was like, Rumble told me, why you why is she calling you? That's kind of weird. Like, And I said, she's asking me questions about her ex. And she was like, but y'all not friends anymore. That's kind of weird. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm just listening to this girl. I'm just literally like giving advice. That's all I'm doing. There's nothing else to it, nothing more, nothing else. I promise you. And she was like, okay. So we get into the, like, after we left my mama's crib, we went to the car. We drove back uh, home. She felt the type of way. She kind of like went off on me about it. And she was just like, oh, that's weird. I know how women get when they're in vulnerable states. Like, then she'll end up probably eventually falling for you. And I'm just like, she's not going to fall for me, bro. Like, I was like, I know this. Like, I don't know her like that, like that. But I know her, you know? Because she's my, 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 um, my, my old best friend's ex-girlfriend. So, I, like, I don't know her well, well, but I know her well enough. And it's not going to ever be nothing like that. So, she didn't want me talking to that girl. I was like, okay. So, at this time, I'm Carlos. I was Carlos for like, a while in the marriage, I ain't gonna lie, like some months, because my car broke down again, and she picked me up from work one time, and she was just like, you know, we started talking about, you know, the scenario and everything about that, that girl, and then she, I told her, I was like, I sworn I told you about this, like, I could have sworn I told you about this, you know what I mean, and then she was like, you didn't, and got into a whole, like, arguing about that, then I was like, hold on, I was like, matter of fact, how come you were saving up money behind my back and not trying to let me know, you know what I mean, like, she started to save up money behind my back in a marriage. Like, I heard her on the phone one time talking to her friend, talking about, oh, I'm going to save up this amount of money from each paycheck. I'm going to do it for four paychecks, and then we're going to go to out of the country type stuff, right? And I overheard that, and then I remember I waited a week to see if she's going to say something. She didn't ever bring it up to me. And you know, in a marriage, you, I'm supposed to be the first person that you tell with everything. Everything. Not your friends or whoever the fuck you're talking to on the low. You know what I mean? Like, you're not supposed to be doing that type of stuff. So... I, I mean, after a week and a day, because it, it was literally a week, so set eight days, because it was a week and a day that went by, literally eight days went by, I ended up confronting her, I'm like, girl, like, well, how come you didn't tell me about you saving up your money, like, behind my back, and she was like, oh, I'm, she immediately apologized, she was like, I'm sorry about that, but it, it wasn't what you, like, what you think, and stuff, you know, but I'm sorry about that, and I'm just like, you know, okay, and then when we was in the car, you know, fast forward, when we was in the car, and we thought, I was like, how come you didn't even mention that up to me? I'm like, girl, I tell you about everything. Like, every paycheck I get, I show you my pay stubs. I'm literally, if I'm about to hang out with the guys, I'm going to let you know. If I hang out with anybody, I let you know way before. I don't I don't hide nothing from that girl. Nothing. 
You know what I mean? So I'm just like, bro, it seems like I'm in a constant battle with me just being super, like, you know, just, like, committed to the relationship. And I feel like she just wasn't committing. Not saying, not, not as far as, like, cheating and shit like that. But I feel like she just wasn't in it. Like, the, the things that people should value in a, in a relationship or a marriage, you're supposed to literally talk to your person, communicate with your person about everything way before you talk to your friends, your family, anything, because that's who you're going to be with for the rest of your damn life. But I feel like she just wasn't up for that task because I don't know what's, I don't know what mentally was wrong with that girl at the time, but she just, it's like, she it's like inevitable for that girl to literally just be committed to me or just loyal to me as a person. It was like impossible for that girl. I swear to God. So we go home and stuff like that. And then, um, 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 we get, we get into like a, she, she ended up getting like a, a um, a, um, what is that called? Um, was driving home. She ended up getting a, a private call. It was a private number that called her. And the, the phone's ringing. I'm like, pick that up. She's like, no, no. She's like, I don't want to pick it up because, um, when, um, you know, when people do this, they don't like they they hang up type stuff, or something like that. And I'm like, pick that up, girl. She was gonna let it ring out. And I'm like, why is it a private number calling you in the first place? You know what I mean? Then the, she picked up like literally the last ring. She picked up the person, didn't say nothing. She was like, oh, this is the reason why I didn't do it. And then I was like, okay. So then we going back to another topic. She tried to make it seem like I was like having trust issues on her about that, like saying like, oh, you don't trust me. I'm like, girl, I. I didn't even mention anything else with that conversation. Like, I did feel weirded out by you getting an unknown call. But then again, I know that people do be doing childish stuff like that. You know what I mean? But why didn't you want to answer in front of me, though? You know what I mean? Because people still be put, picking up private numbers. You know what I mean? Like, private calls. Why didn't you want to answer in front of me? But I didn't push that on her, you know? But she was like, like, she she was, she was like, uh, she felt that way because I ain't going to lie. Like, there was some things, and I don't really want to say this, but it, now nah, I'm going to just say it. When we was at, the, the Somali dance practice. She was being touchy feely with this one dude, a little too touchy with this one guy. And we was practicing, so like we was like in the audience where like the 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 chairs elevate the further out it is. So I'm like three three rows above uh, Rumla, and she was talking to one of her, you know, she was with her friends that she that she known, you know, and uh, it was all oh, there was all oh, there was guy friends. And then like I'm with my friend, we both in the back, just like three row, three rows behind. I'm seeing these people, I'm seeing her and this dude getting touchy. I swear to God on my mama, getting touchy. And I'm just like, huh? I'm thinking I'm tweaking, bro. I literally think I'm tweaking. So I talk to my friend, and I'm just like, bro, like, am I tweaking or they been a little too touchy Philly? Literally, every time they laugh and talk, they been too touchy, bro. And then he was like, oh, no, nah, you're, you're not tweaking. They, they definitely touching and stuff like that. And then I was like, should I do something about it? Because I'll beat dude ass. Like, he, nah, trust me, I'll knock dude out. But he was like, that wouldn't be a smart idea. He was like, imagine, you African-American, you're in a place filled with Somalis. You do something like that, they're going to stereotype you and label you as something that you probably don't want to be called. So I was like, okay, bet. So I I ended up saying nothing about it, but I was hurt about it. Like, when we were going home, I was hurt about that. You know what I mean? And I, I didn't talk to her for, like, two days, and we drove back. She knew there was something wrong with me. But then I ended up telling her, you know? I was like, you were being too touchy-feely with that dude. I don't know why you were doing that. And she knew immediately. She knew exactly what I was talking about. But she she tried to, like, and she apologized immediately. She was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I should never done that. Like, And to me, you know, I'm just like, that's weird. Like. Like if if even if I didn't say none of like that's that's weird, bro. Like that's actually weird that you been you touching and he's touching you a little too much. And then I said like he was caressing her hand and she was so fixated on that part out of everything, she flipped that into an argument. She said, Oh no, he wasn't caressing my hand, he wasn't doing that. And she started turning up on me about that. I'm like, girl, I'm the one that's hurt right now. And you trying to flip this on me when you were the one that got <laughs> literally spotted out, caught doing stuff like that. And you trying to flip that on me about you. You know what I mean? Uh, um, about the caressing, cause he was caressing her hand. I seen the whole thing, but she tried to say, "Oh, he wasn't caressing my hand. He wasn't doing that." She was just so fixed on that. But either way, the whole scenario was fucked up. Whether he was caressing your hand or not, y'all were still being too touchy feely. You know what I mean? Cause that's not, I don't do shit like that, bro. On my mama, so she thought that I was like projecting that when we was going back home, and then we start arguing stuff like that, and then uh, she ended up pulling over on the side of the, on the highway. She ended up pulling over on the highway, and said, "Get out of my car." I'm like, nigga, what? I ain't getting up out of nowhere, bro. She was like, if you don't get out, I'm going to get someone to get you out. I'm like, okay, get anybody you want. I'll beat the fuck out of all of them, for real. So she ended up um, calling one of her friends. I don't know if it's a guy, a girl, or anything. She ended up um, calling them. I ended up calling my mom, and I'm like, Ma, you see this girl? She bogus as hell. She doing this and that. Like, she bogus for real. And then she was just, uh, she was on the phone with her friend, and then, like, we arguing. So she said, get out of my car. I'm like, no, girl. I'm like, nigga, who's going to get me out this bitch? Like, get one of your homies right now to pull up. They know what's going to happen. And she was like, oh, for real? And then 
my mom was just like, you know, boy, get out. But before my mom even said that, I was just like, and I should never said this. I was bogus for saying this, but I said, I was like, I'll get some bitches to beat your ass. And she was like, she was like, oh, for real, get them. I'm like, okay, bad. I was like, matter of fact, I'll slap the fuck out of you myself. I'll beat your ass. I, and I should never said that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I should have never said it was just goofy activities of me. I should never said that. Then my mom said, get out. So I got out. I walked home from the highway. When I got home, um, we started arguing immediately. And um, 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 when I walked home, we started arguing and stuff like that. And then I was upstairs. I'm changing my clothes and stuff. From work, I got off work. I'm changing my clothes and everything. And then uh, all I hear, all I, when I look up, when I'm changing my clothes, I literally just see Romla and her friend came over into the room. And she said, you got to go. In front of her friend, she said, you got to go. I'm like, go where, nigga? This, this is my house. What are you talking about? And I was like, you told me, you told my mama that you're not going to ever kick me out again. You feel me? And she was like, she was like, you got to go. Get out. I'm like, man, no one's getting me out this crib. I'm not going this time. Because at this time, I didn't have a car. And she still didn't care about that. But she told me about kicking me out and stuff like that. And then um, I was like, man, I pay for renting this bitch. No one's kicking me out. And then she talked to her friend. She was like, you see, this guy always bring up what he do for me. I'm like, I didn't bring up nothing you do for me. What do you expect me to say when you kick me out of my own crib? Like, that's the only thing that I could say in that moment because I literally do pay for the house. Like, my name not on the lease, but I pay for the house. What do you expect me to say? I'm getting kicked out. Like, I wouldn't say nothing. That's not throwing something in your face if I'm just saying that based off of what you're saying to me. And then she was like, and she was like, uh, I was like, I pay most of rent in this bitch anyway. And she was like, man, she was like, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm like, oh. Islamically, the man's supposed to cover everything. I agree with that. And that's 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 what I strive to be for, too. You know what I mean? Like, I strive to be that. But at the time, scenarios was hard. I was saving up to get a car. I just, a lot that was going on. You know what I mean? A lot. And um, she was like, oh, you're a man. You're supposed to pay um all the bills and stuff like that. Then I'm like, Okay, so this is how you was in front of your friend because you never said this to me. You the one that suggested that we're going to do 50-50. And I do feel like whatever, you know, situation, people, you know, do things based off your situation. You know, I am a strong believer that, you know, the men should pay for, like, the rent. You know what I mean? Like, all the rent and stuff like that. I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with that. But given your situation, go about things however your situation is. You know what I mean? That's how individual I feel like individuals should go about things. And when she hit me with that in front of a friend, I'm like, that's something you never said to me. So, like, who are you behind my back? Like, who really are you, girl? So we argue and stuff like that. She ended up calling the cops again. She called the cops on me again. And I called my homie. I'm like, bro, like, man, I, I can I spend a night at your crib? Because he live in the next building as me. Like, we live in the same, like, complex, but just different buildings. And uh, he was like, all right, bet I'm at the store real quick. I'm going to hit you up when I, when I come back. Literally under five minutes, nigga. He, he pulled up like in two minutes. He pulled up. He was like, bro, 12 outside right now. Get up out of that real quick. So I grab my stuff. I go downstairs. She's in front of the door. She's like, you ain't going nowhere. I'm like, what? Why? She's like, give me the key. I'm like, girl, I'm not giving you the key until I get all my stuff out of this crib. She's like, give me the key right now. You're not leaving. I'm like, okay. Told her friend because her friend was sitting down on the counter. I'm like, get your friend away from the door. Or get your friend out of my face. She didn't listen the first time. Told her again, get your friend up out of my face. She didn't listen the second time. So I'm like, okay, bet. So Rumble's in front of the door, not trying to make me leave. And the cops is literally coming on their way in the building. So I, op- I I try to pull the door. She pushed her body onto it. Pulled again. Pulled her body onto it. I'm like, okay. About to put more strength into this one. Pulled it open the third time. I got it open. My whole body is out the door. She slammed my foot in the door. And I kid you not, boy, that stuff hurted badly. And then as I fell, I tried to like hold myself up with my hands. So I messed up my thumb. I actually torn my ligament from that. You know, and my foot was so swollen, it was messed up. So after that, you know, I'm mad. I'm walking like after, you know, my homie picked me up. I told him, like, bro, I need to go for a walk real quick. So I went for a walk by myself for like two hours, literally just pacing back and forth. I'm mad. I'm outside. Just like, man, I can't deal with this stuff, man. I'm just I'm depressed, bro. Like, I don't know what's going on. You know, so I ended up going when I got back to his house, my adrenaline running. So I got back to his house. I slept the next day. I ended up going to. um he let me borrow his one of his cars, right? Ended up going to the hospital. Got an X-ray um, uh, and an MRI. Um, they found out that my my left hand, like my thumb, and then my um, my um, um, what's that appendix? Oh, not appendix. Oh, not appendix. Uh, index finger was was uh, was uh, torn. So I torn the ligament in my in my um, in my thumb area. 
So I'm wearing a cast and stuff like that. And at this time, she kicked me out. So um, my stuff, like, I don't, you know, I'm out of that crib. So one day, you know, I, gra I grabbed, like, a uh, majority of my clothes and stuff like that. But I, I didn't grab everything in time because she wasn't there, you know. And um, I went to my mama's crib. Um, I went back this other day. I, I, got, I had my friend to help me out because I was moving everything this time. And my friend was like, yo, bro. He's like, bro, there's some girls. He's like, that's Rumma smoking on a, on a balcony. I'm like, huh? And I'm, I'm like two minutes out. So I pulled up. I seen them smoking, you know, a blunt on a, on a balcony and stuff like that. And I'm like, huh? Got out the whip. We went inside the house. Went to the door. She changed the locks on me, bro. And I kid you not, I only had a few clothes. I didn't even have my shoes. I had only sandals. I only had my sandals on me. I'm trying to go in. I'm like, man, let me get my stuff. And she she changed the locks. She was like, no, nigga, you, you can't get your stuff. I told you to get it this other day. You didn't listen to me. I told you to give me the key. I'm like, girl, I'm just trying to grab my stuff. Like, what's so, I'm, I said, I don't want to be with you no more. I just want to grab my stuff and leave completely. And she's like, she's like, no, I told you to do this. Uh, I told you to give me the key. You didn't listen to me. So I'm like, okay. So she didn't let me grab. So I'm like for a whole, like, I think week and a half or something like that. I didn't have no, I only had sandals, bro. Literally. I had no shoes. She didn't let me grab my shoes or nothing that I had in that crib. Then like uh, close to a month go by. I was at my mama's crib. We was on a break. Like I'm just at my mama's crib and stuff like that. It was like a, like, it was like close. It was technically like a month. And then. We was in communication the whole entire time trying to see if we're going to work things out, but nothing was working. But we, she, you know, we talked one day. She was crying because she, she, she had to handle all the bills herself this time. And I initially was going to still help while I was even kicked out. And I talked to my mama. I talked to my friends. They were like, what? They're like, she kicked you out of your career, bro. You had no whip or nothing like that. She didn't care about your well-being. Why are you worried about hers? And I'm like, y'all right. Uh, and I, I felt bad by doing that because, you know, as a man, I know what I'm supposed to do. And I feel like I just wasn't fulfilling my duties. But she was covering everything herself that time. She had to get three jobs. Things was going, it was just hard for her. You know, she had no time to herself like that. And she was crying to me one time and we were talking. And I was, you know, I was still apologizing for everything that I've done. And she was, um, she apologized for things that she did too. And she was like, you know, she went, like, I asked her, I was like, do you want me to come back? And she was like, you know, she was like, um, yeah. And, you know, we tried to make things work. I ain't gonna lie, when I came back in this time, because I told her I don't want to argue, I just want peace. I don't like hostility. I come from a household where there's always fights, it's always loud, there's always something. I don't like that stuff, man. I just want peace. And we tried to make things work. Nothing was really going as planned. We I think that time was, like, really good for, like, three weeks. This is when we, like, last three weeks to argue and stuff like that. But it just, things just went back to square one. Um... On that break, like, you know, when um, I came to the crib and they were smoking, because uh, I left some things out, but when I was um, came to the crib and they were smoking, and then when I had no and I had no way to get my clothes, as I'm walking out the crib, and then I go outside, and then they on the balcony, went back on the balcony, one of those two of her friends with her, it's two girls, and who knows who was in that crib, it was two girls, and um, um, one of them, like, started laughing at me, Rumla was laughing too, the other one was, like, doing this, like, this obnoxious, because he knew that I don't like Rumla smoking, you know, I don't deal with smoking, the fact that Rumla smoked, she was smoking weed immediately, like literally two days after we broke up, you smoking weed and you claim that you don't smoke. Cause after that Kelly thing, she didn't smoke ever again after that. That's what she claimed. And then she went back to that immediately. Man, I was hurt, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I, was, I felt humiliated. I was embarrassed, bro. Cause I'm like, I got these girls in my house laughing at me as I'm going to my whip without any of my belongings. I was hurt, bro. Like hurt. And that's some messed up things that, you know what I mean? I just, man. So. I came back in. We trying to make things work. Um, or oh, that before this, I'm, I'm, I'm my my story. Like so, before I even came back, what I did that was wrong was that, and I did it intentionally. You know, I did it intentionally. I ain't gonna lie. I ended up messaging this one girl. Like I added it because we 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 had each other on Snapchat back then. I ended up adding this girl on Instagram, and then I ended up it was a birthday. I ended up saying happy birthday to her, and she was like, "Oh, thank you, Prince," and I was like, "You welcome," with a kissing emoji, and Rumble found out. And she found out immediately because that girl ended up telling somebody and that person told Rumla. And it was just messy, but I just, that's what I did. I felt, I was like, you fuck, like you messed up my hand. My hand, even to this day, my hand is still messed up. I can't use my left hand. You kicked me out of my crib. You called the cops on me. I could have lost my life. You kicked me out when it's, when it's, when I have no whip. You humiliate me when you know my story. You know what, what I went through. You humiliated me in front of people when you know my story, bro. I was like, man, I got to get back somehow. So, yeah, I messaged that girl. And it was wrong. Completely wrong. Then fast forward. 
that's the last situation that happened that caused us to not be together to this day right now. We got to an argument. She was like, you know, what you did to that one, you mentioned that one girl, that's that's flirting. And I was like, that's not, I was like, to me, that's not flirting. She was like, you sent the kissing emoji to that girl. That is flirting. And I was like, to me personally, that's not flirting. It's wrong. And it's not something that any man that's married or in a relationship should do. But that I don't look at that as flirting. Like, that's just to me. But I agree that it was wrong. And she was like, she's like, it is flirting. She's like I said, she's the type of person. She wants people to agree. I'm not always going to agree with you. You feel me? And she was like, um, she was like, oh, you call one of your friends? I was like, okay, I can call one of my friends right now. So I called one of my homies. He's on the phone. And pretty much, long story short, the dude pretty much agreed with him. He was pretty much like, oh, I can see where she's coming from with it. Like, I can see where she's coming from. And then she, you know, she got geeked up about that. And then from that topic, it went to another um, topic where it was like, I mentioned one of my friends that's, that sooner or later became friends with Rumbler. But she was like my best friend. But she was, um, she became cool with Rumbler over time, you know. And I ended up saying this. I was like, yo, even so-and-so agree with me that your friends, not your real friends. And that's literally all I said. I literally said, even she agree with me that your friends, not your real friends. Rum was like, huh? She said, what? Wait, what? She said, what? Oh, no, I'm about to call her right now. And she was mad as hell. She about to go off on this girl. And me, I'm like, bro, you're not going to do this. Like, I, I, I didn't come here for arguments and stuff like that. I was like, man, you trying to ruin like my friendship. Like, Cause the way Rum was gonna do it, she was gonna go off on this girl. Like Lily, I'm talking about, cause I know she has a nasty attitude problem. She was mad at that time, and she was like, "I'm about to call her right now." So as she grabbed her phone, I grabbed her hand. So I'm restraining her by her hand. I'm like, "Girl, stop fucking playing with me, girl." She was like, "I was like, do you want to ruin my friendship?" And she's like, "Oh, you already ruined all my friendships." And like I said, she always blamed me for stuff. I'm like, "I didn't ruin your friendship with your friend. They did that. You know what I mean?" And then I grabbed by her hand and stuff like that, and. You know, she can't grab. I'm stronger, so I'm grabbing her by her wrist and stuff like that. And I'm just like, girl, stop fucking playing with me. You never listen. Start listening, man. Why are you always trying to be so hostile? And then she ended up, I ended up letting her go. She fell on the floor. Literally, she fell on the floor as soon as I let her go. And then she got up and then, like, she ended up picking up her phone. This is how conniving this girl is. She's bogus as hell for this. She ended up picking up her phone. She ended up recording. And I didn't even know she was recording. She ended up throwing my suitcase down. It's, it's, she ended up throwing, it's my suitcase that my, I was borrowing from my friend, but she threw my suitcase down and my, my stuff that was on my, my my shelf, my books and everything. She ended up throwing things down. And then, like, even she had a clip of it, too. I ended up grabbing her by her neck. I'm like, girl, stop fucking playing with me. I was like, don't throw my shit. Like, don't throw my shit. And I grabbed her by her neck literally for three seconds. You can even see it in the video. Three seconds or two seconds. Two or three seconds. I was like, yo, stop fucking playing with me. Why you throwing down my shit? I didn't touch your stuff. Why you throwing my stuff? She did it on purpose just so she can get some sympathy points from people. And I'm like, because, and I didn't even know she was recording at that time. I found out after. And then, she ended up, you know, I started cussing. That's the only time I actually started, like, saying some messed up things. So I was calling her all types of words, bro, like, messed up words. I ain't going to lie. Like, messed up words. And then she was like, she started crying, and she left the house. She was gone for, like, two hours. And I'm just like, you know, I'm texting her, cussing her out. I'm saying, you bogus as heck. I'm like, you I'm just saying all I'm calling all types of names too, and I've never done that, and I feel bad for that. I've never done that, you know what I mean? Like no one deserves to be called any type of names, you know what I mean? And then when she came back into the crib, she um 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 I told her give me my ring because I didn't want to be with this girl. I said give me my ring. She was like, uh, no, you can, I'm gonna give you the ring once you give me the key to this crib and get out of my house because she tried to kick me out again. And I'm like, girl, I'm like telling you, I'm leaving, and once I leave in two days, I'm gonna give you your key. I'm gonna leave it to you. So she pretty much going upstairs, grabbing the, um, the ring. You know what she done to the ring? That's what I'm saying. This girl can never just be calm and, and just be peaceful. Like, it's, it's always something. She ended up throwing the ring at the wall. And then, and like, I, I should never have done it. I'm very wrong for this. But I grabbed her by the neck again. I'm like, girl, why you keep fucking playing with me, man? And then I pushed her on the bed. I said, girl, stop playing. And then she ended up leaving the house. She started crying and stuff like that. I ain't gonna lie. Immediately, I was... I felt apologetic. Like, I was just sad because I'm just like, I'm not that type of dude. Like, I've never, ever had to, like, put my arm around any woman's neck or push any girl in the bed. I've never done nothing like that. So I was just like, man, this is my call. Like, this this is a calling that this is not for me because I'm way too peaceful for this bullshit, bro. I don't deal with hostility. I don't like that stuff, bro, at all, at all, bro. I don't do that. So when that happened, bro, I'm sad. I'm overthinking. Like, I'm stressing, bro. And then she came back the next day. I tried talking to her. I tried to apologize. She said, I don't look at you as a man anymore and stuff like that. And then 
she tried to claim that I choked her, but I was like, girl, no one choked. She was on the phone with her friend. I was like, no one choked you, girl. Like, don't lie. And she was like, oh, yeah, you just put your hand around my neck. So she corrected herself on that. But, like, there's, like, a big misconfusion. Like, she tried to, like, only reason why I even found out that she was, like, online trying to, like, act like she got abused was from one of my friends. They sent me a screenshot of her snap, cause I'm, or not snap, but TikTok, because I don't have her on TikTok anymore. We didn't have each other on social media. She blocked me on everything. I just wasn't, you know, only I didn't look at TikTok completely just gave up on TikTok. And then she she posted something. She reposted like a uh, uh, um, uh, physical um, physical abuse, a domestic domestic abuse thingy. And she like retweeted, not retweeted, but shared it on TikTok. And she had a comment saying, oh my, she said like, uh, she said this triggered me. And I was like, huh? I'm like, man, I've never hit you, girl. I've never abused you. We want to talk about abuse. Look what you've done to me. You caused permanent damage to my hand. You went up in my face multiple times trying to tempt me to hit you when I never did throughout the whole relationship and marriage. I've never hit you. And you used to come in my face, hitting me in my chest, telling me, hit me, nigga, hit me, hit me. I've never done that because I'm not that type of dude. It took me to the literally the last moment, the last day for me to even put my hand around your neck. And you trying to claim me as an abuser? Come on, stop playing with me, girl. You know my character. Like I said on Instagram, I know your heart and you know my heart. So let's not get things twisted and stop trying to be a victim every time, bro. Because I've never been violent towards you in that whole marriage. You've been violent towards me. You've been hostile towards me every time when I tried to calm a grown woman down. Come on, man. That's bullshit, bro. Stop playing, girl. And ever since then, that's when we just never been together ever since. We caught off everything. Literally. I don't want nothing to do with that girl. I wish nothing but the best in her future endeavors. You know, because I really want her to learn from this experience. Just as much as I, because I already, I'm learning, bro. I learned from what I, I know exactly what I want in a woman now. I don't want someone that's 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 not emotionally intelligent. I need someone that know how to control their emotions. I don't care if you're a woman, bro. Like, cause women have a uh, like a built up excuse about them being a woman, so they can, you know, have attitudes and be hostile. Like, nah, bro, I'm not toxic. I'm not part of this generation. I don't deal with none of that. I want a woman, and I want her to learn from this. Cause I know sometime in the future she probably is gonna look back and be like, damn, like a lot of our issues wasn't even big. Why did I do what I did? We could have easily resolved things. I know it's going to be that talk within herself she's going to have one day. You know what I mean? So, inshallah, I just hope both of us, I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed. I ain't going to lie. Like, I was I was hurt for by like a little bit. But I train myself for these moments because anything can happen in life. And I'm a warrior. I went through too much in my life. So, something like this, yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big thing. But there's nothing I can't overcome. I always rebuild myself no matter what. And I hope she do the same. Because at the end of the day, I know that Rumla has a beautiful heart inside. I feel like everybody in this world is a good person. Rumla's a good person. I just feel like she's done bad to me. And that's just how some people is. Like, some people are just very good people at heart, but they just do certain individuals bogus. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of stuff that happened in our relationship, I know I didn't deserve. I know there's certain things in the relationship that she didn't deserve. But if there was something that you did not want that I told you from the start, why did you continue to to be with me? You didn't have to lie to me. If you were honest with me about everything from the start, I would have gave you that. I would have still gave you a chance. I gave you a chance when you lied to me. That's what started our problems in our relationship was lies. Everything was built off of lies where I had to investigate myself to find out. I know everything now. Literally everything. It's crazy, man. Assalamu alaikum. That's my story. And that's what happened.